Shalom, shalom. Uh, dear ones, the Lord put uh, something on my heart that I believe is very important to hear for many people. The Lord tells us in Matthew 28, 19, go then. So get moving. Go then. Don't sit around. Go then and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have com commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the days, perpetually. Uh, yeah, but the main thing is go and make disciples. Now, it's amazing that in all the four Gospels, you only read about disciples and followers of Jesus Christ. Nowhere uh, does it say, uh, talk about Christians. And I wondered, I said, Lord, we baptize babies and we call them Christians. And, and you, don't, you don't, what is the problem? And you know, he gave me then the scripture in, in, uh, in Acts eleven twenty six. Here is the story of uh, Barnabas uh, and Saul, and it says here in verse 26, and when he had found him, Saul, he brought him back to Antioch for a whole year. They assembled together with and were guests of the church and instructed a large number of people and in Antioch, the disciples were called first Christians. You know, I wondered, why do we call everybody that is going to church a Christian? Many people even believe because they are born in Germany or in Aust Austria or in Switzerland, they are Christians because of their birth in that continent. And that is far from the truth, dear ones. And I do believe that in the last centuries, we have made big, big mistakes. We have filled churches with members. Membership was important. Membership to whom? To a denomination. Nowhere does it say in the Bible that the denominations will appear before the throne of grace. It's the nations. And I think the whole world has missed to make their nations to dis disciples of Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus Christ, Christians. <clears throat> you know, many years ago, somebody asked me once, if there was a persecution of Christians, would they know you are one? I was thinking. I said, mm -mm, no. I think they would have said, I'm friendly, I'm humanistic, I'm helpful, <clears throat> I'm a giving person, I'm a friendly person, but they would never have said, I'm motivated by Christ for what I'm doing. And so, when I realized that, that it's not, it's not for sure that people would recognize me, that I am a follower of Jesus Christ, that I am a Christian, uh, if there was a persecution of Christians. They would have said, I'm religious. The big difference between religion and Christianity. <clears throat> and then I said, Lord, that has to change. If there's a persecution of Christians, I will be, I should be, and I want to be. One of the first ones, they say, this is one. This is one of them. She follows Jesus Christ. And I do believe that I am at that point where I can be recognized as a Christian because I'm following Jesus Christ. And, uh, and it makes me very happy. And you know, once you have overcome death, the fear of death, you cannot be scared anymore. You cannot be shocked anymore. You know, if anybody delivers you prematurely into glory, you can be thankful because they have shortened your testing time on earth. Hallelujah. The same is, you know, <clears throat> the Bible says also here in uh, Matthew 4, 18, 
Uh, let me see what it is. Matthew 4. <clears throat> 18. <clears throat> oh, no, there's something else, but it's good. It's good. <clears throat> As Jesus was walking at the Sea of Galilee, he noticed two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, throwing a drag net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Now listen. And Jesus said to them, Come after me as disciples, letting me be your guide. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Dear ones, then it said, At once they left their nets and became his disciples, sided with his party and followed him. <clears throat> and going on further from there, he noticed two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets and putting them to rights. And he called them. At once they left the boat and their father and joined Jesus as disciples, sided with his party and followed him. Halleluja, ihr Lieben, uh, dear ones, they did not even consult the Father. It said here, in, uh, because they followed, they even left their Father alone. Uh, it says in, uh, let me see, in Matthew, no, in uh, Luke 14, it is, to be a follower of Jesus Christ is a radical thing. It's a radical thing. It's not a comfortable thing. And we created churches where people are comfortable. Dear ones, that is the flesh. <coughs> God wants the spirit to be comfortable, but the flesh to die. So, now we have here Luke 14, 26. It says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, that is in the sense of indifference to or relative to his required for them in a comparison with his attitude towards God. And likewise, his wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. Whoever does not persevere and carry his own cross and come after, follow me, cannot be my disciple. So, dear ones, it's, it's a matter of priority. You know, God doesn't want us to hate father and mother, but he wants you to love God more than father and mother, to love God more than your children, to love God more than your wife, to love God more than your brothers and sisters, to love God more than your country. Jesus is very jealous. He is a jealous God. He wants to be the number one priority in, the, in your life. And then, you know, the, God doesn't want us to be poor. He doesn't want us to be sick. He doesn't want us to be uh, without influence. He, as a matter of fact, he says, seek ye first my kingdom, my righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. That doesn't mean that you, have, you don't have them, but they don't play, play the first role in your life. God wants you to be totally dependent on him, on him. You know, I'm so thankful that my husband in glory, Herbert, we made on our wedding day the decision that never should Jesus have any competition between our love and his love. We will support each other to have Jesus number one. You know, he even, uh, you know, he, we married with cancer already, which we didn't know, but when it was obvious, I was shocked because for the first time in my life, I really felt what it meant to be one with somebody and to build the kingdom of God together and to ha look into the same direction. You know, many people look into each other's eyes all the time, but we have to look into the eyes of Jesus. And then we, have, we get closer and closer to each other also. And, and to lose this man that has become my best friend, through the Holy Spirit, given to me as my protection, as my 
yeah, as my security, as my, uh, how shall I say, I, I felt whole because God had given me his partner for me. I was a completion to him and he was a completion to me and we were a real, a real blessing to each other. And, and now I should let go. I wanted to die. I couldn't imagine that I could continue now that I had experienced for the first time what it means to be one. <clears throat> but my husband, and you know, he loved Jesus more than he loved me. He said, no, no, Maria, you cannot die with me. You continue. God is not yet finished with you yet. He's finished with me, but not yet with you. He has still pl big plans for your life. You look to Jesus, and he gives you strong men and women, and you continue. You, you know what? I couldn't care less about the big plans. I wanted to die. I was finished with life. I couldn't imagine to live alone again. But by God's grace, you know, God's will is stronger than your will. And, uh, and I then submitted, and I did what I, what I was told. I looked to Jesus, I continuously looked to Jesus to give me strong men and women to continue and to build the kingdom of God. And, uh, and I know there are quite a few that have already heard the call and they obey and we together are blessed. Others, the call was there, but they didn't respond. And I think they are missing out because God has a, such an anointing on this ministry, not because of me, but because of his favor because of his grace. So, I am very, and, and I promise you, this ministry, although it is now the biggest in Uganda, is not my life. This ministry is a part of fruit because of, I, because of my living together with Jesus. I only do every day, uh, I, yeah, I do every day what he tells me and the outcome is to me a holy shock. He is so good. But to get us to the point where we say, Lord, I am at your disposal. No longer God has to be at my disposal, but I am at your disposal. Your holy, kind, perfect will be done. Glorify your name through my life and make me a blessing. And give me joy and give me peace that the world cannot give and cannot take. And you will see, you know, <coughs> We, when you give to a child somebody, something, you know, immediately the child does this, which means it's clinging to it. It's, and you take it out of the hand and it will scream. We need to remain like this, that God can put into our hands and take out of our hands as he pleases, as he sees fit for us. And so uh, I have come to the point uh, that, you know, in, in Luke 14, 26, uh, I don't think I've read it to you yet, that says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and so on, uh, or wife and children, brothers, sisters, home, car, mm, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. That does not mean that you should hate your parents, but in comparison to the love that you have for God, and the love for your parents, or for your spouse, or your children, it looks like hate. It's just like the sun. The sun is very bright, and it has dark spots. The dark spots are also very bright. But compared to the rest of the sun, they look like darkness. And this is, it's a relationship, dear ones. Otherwise, God would not say, seek ye first. First, he wants to be first. My kingdom, my righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. You know, God wants to give you the best family, the best wife, the best husband, the best children, the best in everything, the best influence in this world. God wants to bless you. God wants to uh, uh, make you a, a happy influence for his kingdom in this world. I mean, God wants to give you a rich life. Abraham was very rich, but he was even willing to sacrifice his son. God asked him if he was willing to sacrifice his son. He was willing. All his promises were connected with this son of promise. But he thought if God wants him, he will raise him from the dead. 
He trusted God so much that he knew if I let go, God will provide in a way that I cannot imagine right now. And so, you know, I have had a lot of letting go situations, but God has always brought better situations from what I let go. And sometimes we cannot imagine that it could be better, but he did, and he does. God looks for people that have their priorities right in their lives. First, God. Then, all these other things. And that's last yourself. Then you will have joy. Joy is J-O-Y. Jesus, others, yourself. And I promise you, if you have let go of making yourself first, you will be blessed no end. No end. But God will teach you to stand in the right time. He will, he will teach you when to let go, when to stand. He will, uh, he, he will teach you in every situation. He will remind you in his ways. So, and you know, <clears throat> a lot of times I feel like we so-called church people have been taught to love everybody. But you know what? God does not love sin. He does not love murder. He doesn't love corruption. He doesn't love lying. He doesn't love anything that is not in agreement with his character. But he wants us to love the people, not the sin. Forgive the people and pray for them. Pray for them. You know, there is a lot that the Holy Spirit wants to bring into the right balance in these days. And he's searching all the hearts. What, what are your motives? for doing what you are doing. Are you doing things to be seen by people? Or are you doing it because you obey God and his voice? Yeah, God wants you to be fruitful. Let's go to John 15. <clears throat> and there we see what true fruitfulness is. The Bible says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he cuts away, trims off, takes away, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. I asked once the Lord, what happens when we trim the branches of a tree? He said, then the tree gets deeper roots. He stretches itself into deeper, healthy ground to get better nourishment, you know? <clears throat> you are cleansed and pruned already because of the word which I have given you, the teachings I have discussed with you. Dwell in me. That means really be in Christ. Dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Live in me, and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in, vitally united to the vine, and neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. Now it comes. This is my favorite verse. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me, and I in him, bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. That's the hardest message God has to write in our hearts. Without him, we can do nothing. That's zero, 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 which amounts for the kingdom of God. We can do, you know, movements and actions, and uh, but they will not amount to anything. <clears throat> then it says in verse 7, if, and if is the most important word in the Bible, if you live in me, abide vitally united to me, not just visit every week a Sunday morning service and having done your Christian duty, dear ones. God wants to have communion, intimate fellowship with you 24 hours. Dear ones, I want to read now to you uh, John 15, 14. 
You are my friends if you keep on doing the things which I command you to do. Amen. And then he says in verse 15, I do not call you servants, slaves any longer, for the servant does not know what the, his master is doing, <clears throat> what his master is working out. But I have called you my friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. I have revealed to you everything that I have learned from him. And yet, now there comes the real scripture that we need to all very much abide by. You have not chosen me, Jesus says, but I have chosen you. I have appointed you, I have planted you, that you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing, that your fruit may be lasting, that it may remain, abide, so that whatever you ask the Lord in my name, as presenting all that I am, he may give it to you. Hallelujah. Darlings, it is, we are here on earth to represent God, to be his ambassadors, to be his, uh, well, to be his representations. And, uh, and he is dreaming of a body of Christ. <coughs> but Jesus is the head. And we are all connected with him in such a wonderful way that the people around us will see our source is Jesus Christ. Our source, our everything is Jesus Christ and we give all the glory, all the honor to him, but we can keep the joy. And that is my life's desire that I will glorify that God will be able to glorify myself, himself through me in such a way that the people that watch my life will say, this cannot be your doing, Maria. This is too big for you. And I will say, bingo. That is the life of Christ in me, through me, for me. And I am only doing what he says and he is paying what he orders. And he gets all the glory and the honor, but we keep the joy. And I do trust that some of you have gotten a new idea of what it means to be a Christian. It doesn't mean to belong to the Anglican Church, to the Roman Catholic Church, to the Pentecostal Church, nothing. It's not membership. It is heart connection with Jesus Christ in such a way that the two of you become one. Amen. It's the same as a couple, you know, a husband and a wife that really are connected in love. They start looking like each other. They become one voice. They become one purpose. There is no competition between them and their love with God. And that's where God wants us to be. No competition, but himself alone. You know, uh, also, a wife does not want competition with other women in her marriage. A husband doesn't want other competitions with other women, or with other men. He wants to know he's the only one, the only one. That's why I told all my children when they got married, you chose the best, now leave the rest. When you choose Jesus Christ, you have chosen the best. Now leave all the other offerings or the other offers that the enemy wants to give you. Because God will add all these other things if you make him first. I love you. Kwagalanyu. I bless you with faith that is rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ and his word alone. Shalom.